everybody. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Nerdy Jock Media Presents the Dragon Ball Daima Podcast, Episode 2. Gloria, we are so glad to have you guys. Um, my name is Kevin Ketchum, aka the Nerdy Jock, and this is my co host on this show, DK, aka the Dragon Ball Guru. Yep, and we actually just, just like last week, we just finished watching Episode 2 right now. And it was awesome. Really we're, cool. We're coming in hot. We're coming in hot. We're coming in hot. Coming in hot. This, yeah. uh, this episode, more setup, more exposition, also a little bit more world building. Yeah. It's 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 great because, it, you know, the first one was just, we were excited to see what was going on. We had the flashbacks with Majin Buu and all that. And this is really more, hey, we're going to go forward with Daima. Right. Yeah. The first episode, it was just, there was excitement because it didn't suck and because it looked yeah. good. <laughs> and then this one, it's like, oh, okay, now... It's the preamble, like it, it echoed a lot of the stuff that we've already talked exactly. about between the Saiyan and the Namek saga, where it's like we have a. By the way, there's, this is going to be filled with spoilers. So if you oh, ha- yeah. if you haven't seen it, go to Crunchyroll, watch, watch it right now. It's, it's available right now, Fridays yeah. at 10 a.m. By the way, every week they're releasing them. So there's 20 weeks of this. Uh, you're going to get content every every week on Friday that night. We're going to try to edit it and get it out for you as soon as possible. Right. Uh, speaking of getting it out for you. Um, just remember to like and subscribe uh, on YouTube. Follow us on uh, uh, all of our podcasts and Spotify and anywhere you can get, you know, a, a podcast. Yeah, and if you're listening anywhere else, uh, go to YouTube. It's the premiere yeah. experience. That's where we host. We've, we've got animation behind us. I know. We've You'll got see some stills cool stuff on the green screen. Things that we reference <laughs> appear behind us in real time, like magic. So, oh, like yeah, <laughs> Dragon Ball Daima magic. Yeah. Yeah. The original so, name. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you 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 already said it right off the bat. You really like this episode. I like it. I, okay, so I mean, like, was it as good? If you're going to compare with episode one, was it as good? I would I would say probably not. But this was a great episode because it was funny. It was full of laughs. It really caught the uh, caught the joy and excitement uh, that you get when you're watching even the original Dragon Ball back in the day. This is kind of like a flashback. Not only going back in size, I feel like we're going back in time a little bit too. We get. You know, some great interactions with Bulma, uh, making fun of Krillin at the very beginning because they all realize they're all very small. And, uh, you know, Bulma makes fun of Krillin saying, oh, well, you were always small anyways. Like, oh, man, don't remind me of that. So right. just just a fun little flashback to the olden days as well. And yeah. And you, you get a lot of really, really good memory moments. And we'll talk about more memory moments later on with the Niobo, Noyo, Noibo. Noibo, yeah, Noibo. yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, hard to pronounce that one. But. Well, Toriyama, you know, from the point when he started doing Super, he was already trying to make Dragon Ball, like, silly and funny again. Exactly. Which, which people had mixed feelings about. Like, like a lot of people were like, wait, why does Goku, why is he stupid now? Why is he dumb? Like, why is he so silly and stuff like that? But that kind of vibe definitely works better for a younger Goku. Yeah. Which might have been one of the reasons why he was like, well, why don't we take the premise from GT where he becomes the kid again? And then it will fit a little bit because, yeah, this Daima Goku acts like Super Goku. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't say he acts like Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z Goku. It's very much Super Goku. Right. But it really fits this version of Goku who is first grade age, mm-hmm. which in the canon, this is the youngest Goku we've ever had just as part of the main story because I believe he was 11 or 12 yeah. in Dragon Ball. So. But, of course, they are smaller and they're shorter until they get like 15 or 16. And yeah. They grow. And they just sp- sprout up super quick. <laughs> but it, it's funny that you, you said that or reminds you of a, a super Goku, but the, the, fu- the great thing about that is y- you're right, and you could tell Toriyama did, uh, they did go back towards Dragon Ball, or just more goofy, a little more fun, a little, lot more antics going on on screen, but remember, like, the one thing about Goku uh, that really ref- is reflected in his new size is that he's always had this kind of, you know, he's always been a kind of aloof, or had a, not a, I would say goofball personality, but very innocent, very right. fun, very childlike, you know, Nature, like that, his nature yeah. is childlike. Yeah, yeah, like just a very, I guess, pure is the word yeah. that Toriyama would use. I mean, sure. he he wasn't incensed at all that um, Master Roshi was using the Noibo as a laundry yeah. pole. He just says it like <laughs> matter of factly. It's like, oh, where was your Noibo? So, yeah. oh, Master Roshi was using it for laundry. <laughs> yeah. So, so later on in the episode, because we're kind of just skipping ahead, and this is live reaction, so we're gonna just be going all over. So I'd say definitely check it out yourself and then come back to us. But yeah. Like, this isn't gonna be beat by beat analysis. Yeah. We're just gonna be talking about. Our thoughts about it as they occur to us. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we we did notice that. So basically, you know, um, at the very beginning though, something that we do need to talk about that the thought was a very interesting point mm-hmm. was that you know, evidently we find out, which is kind of a little plot twist here, that not all three wishes were granted by 
by Shenron. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is kind of huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I my question was I don't remember in anywhere in the canon if if a first timer made a wish and then, then like the right. other the other wishes were granted. I mean, for me, like most of my knowledge of Dragon Ball Z as is, was apparent on the podcast, are saying a Namek saga. Right. O- outside of that, I'm not as well versed because I haven't seen the stuff that's come after as much. But my, I always thought that when Dende remade the Earth Dragon Balls, he made them able to grant two wishes. Right. I thought it was in between Shenron and Perunga, but then at the beginning of Daima, it says that he can grant three, and I'm like. I don't remember that. Was that a mistake? Because I, I, or, or was it? Or am I mistaken? Or whatever. But but like you said, yeah. yeah. Now we have some some Shenron lore. <laughs> so so little little yeah. like a little canon twist. We don't yeah. know if it's real. You know, this is they're kind of switching things up as we go. We saw a little bit of that last episode with a couple uh, canon tweaks there too. Yeah. But this one is pretty significant because he's like. You basically, if you're a, if you're a Dragon Ball user, he knows you. You guys are, are friendly and familiar. If you're a Dragon Ball user, you basically get your frequent frequent user pass. Right. So if you're a first timer, you only get one wish. But if you <laughs> but if you right. if you're a regular <laughs> Dragon Ball user, yeah, let's go, let's do two, let's do three. You know, it's kind of it's kind of flippant in in the retconning of. Uh, the use of Dragon Balls. I mean, after last week's episode with Neva, how he was able to make the Dragon Balls reappear after only being uh, six months since last use. Right. So that was a retcon. And then we have another retcon here about the Dragon Balls. So in the next in the next five months, we're going to see that Dragon Balls, we're just going to have, every week you can have Dragon Ball Wish, I assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and a, a commenter on our last video pointed out um, how there is sort of deeper lore that we're not aware of about the Kaioshins and the Na- the Namekians coming from the Demon Realm. Mm-hmm. And this is something that people who know the deeper lore of Dragon Ball probably already know. Maybe this is something that occurred later in Super in the manga because I know that there were more Namekian things right. happening there. So maybe it was established then and that's sort of the basis of this, but some, you know, some more sort of like deeper, I don't know if it's retconning or what is that like Piccolo has like a encyclopedic knowledge of the demon realm and why the Namekians left. Like, like yeah. he's, he's well aware that Namekians are from the demon realm, that they left, you know, and all this stuff. And yeah. Well, it, I, it, I, well DK, I, th- I think you can easily write that one off. Right. So Piccolo does describe about, I think Kabito does too, right. They're both start talking about it. And, and we, we find out through both of them that basically uh, the Majins were all from the demon realm, you know, which Majin means what? Demon. Yeah. And, you know, in, in Japanese. And they were all, they were all, basically they had free access, you know, open border policy. You could just come right in, leave the demon world, come and go as you please. And then too many demons, uh, you know, started populating other universes. Yeah. You know, so all the other universes. There's, there's like a mass migration. Mass migration. It reminded me of like the backstory of A Song of Ice and Fire, the Game of Thrones oh, books, right, yeah. where, where it's like, you know, just a bunch of people left Essos at one time. Right. And then like, and then eventually, well, I guess, you know, it, the, the borders weren't closed. But in this case, yeah, the demon realm just closed its borders and stopped people from leaving. So. Right. And it's and it's funny because like, you know, maybe once we get into the demon world, we will learn We'll learn more lore about the parallels between those in the demon realm. Because you see there's there's good guys, there's the Kaioshins, the Supreme Kai. Like they were just demons, I, I'm assuming. And then when they left, then they they grew just like Goku and all of our other characters, all of our Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z have grown into being stronger and better people. But like you see, you know, Demon Pink King Piccolo, you know, he was evil. Right. So like you're you're gonna see a, a mix of, you know, good, good, good natured villain or bad nature villains and good natured characters as well so i'm really interested to see if they explain uh the demon realm a little bit more which i'm sure they will because they're going to meet people like gloria which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes here but they're, they're just they're going to meet a, a host of villains but they're also going to meet a lot of hopefully allies on the, along the way yeah and you know with Piccolo, though, I don't know that I'm going to let it slide. I'm not, because right. we talked last week about how this occurs right after Boo. Right. Like it maybe a day later. It's like Boo, Boo gets defeated and now we're at Trunks' birthday party, whatever. Piccolo didn't know who Dabra was in Z. Piccolo didn't even know where he came from. He didn't even know his own name. Oh. He has the, he's that famous line when he fuses with Kami when he says, I am neither Piccolo nor Kami. I'm a Namekian who came here and forgot his name long ago. He doesn't know his origin. How the hell does he know about the demon realm and about why Namekians left and stuff like that? It's like a huge exposition dump that he would not have access to if he doesn't even know who he is. Look. DK, I, you know, <laughs> great point, great point, but I'm going to actually throw a curveball here because, Do I, it. because yeah. I think you, you just mentioned it. 
Piccolo fused with Kami. He was the ruler of, of Earth for hundreds of years. Yes. For a very long time. He knows a lot more. Piccolo just doesn't talk. He's just not a big talker. He's one of those wise guys who's like, uh, do I even need to worry about this? If it's not if it's not pertinent to training or uh, raising up uh, Pan, you know, as Gohan's uncle, you know, stuff like that. Like, if it doesn't really pertain to his life in the moment, I don't think he just sweats it. He's got so much going on. He's got nail fused well, yeah, with him. That, he's that's, got Kami. We're, we're in agreement oh, here. Okay, uh, okay. That, my, my, my contention is how does he have random access memory oh. to ancient Namekian knowledge that he didn't have access to before because all he cared about was A, is Kami ruling the world, and B, Piccolo ruling the world, but, like, evilly and training and getting stronger and stuff like that. Yeah, well, maybe well, maybe he's like uh, it's like the Matrix, where it's like, hey, you can you have access to all information, but you don't want to overload your brain at once. You just want to kind of you know let it slowly uh, percolate. That's my that's my retcon uh, theory of the day that <laughs> works. Not retcon, really. I, I I could I could see somebody making the argument that Kami had knowledge of the broader universe because he brought Goku to Yama to train with King Kai. Right. So he knew about the Kais. So and he also knew about the Kaioshin because obviously when he meets Kaioshin at the Ten Kaiji Budokai, right. he's like freaked out by him. It's like oh man, there's like something about this guy yeah. that I feel is off or weird or whatever. Like he recognized him and then he was able to identify who Kaioshin was. Mm -hmm. later so he has some knowledge of the universe in boo which would make sense but That's i don't know the demon the demon realm thing i think it's a stretch I, I, I think that if we're gonna exposition dump you know it would be interesting it would be an interesting want for piccolo to be like well this could be how i learn about myself because because right. there are so many holes in my memory from before i split to when I came back together and all this stuff, like, and there's this elder mm. Nam Namekian named Neva in the demon realm who would know all of this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, you know, he's like, I always knew I was a demon, but then I learned I was an alien. I didn't know I was a demon <laughs> yeah. anymore, but now I know that I'm both an alien and a demon. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just holes to plug. But yeah, like this episode, well, this episode, again, set up world building and exposition dumps all around. I don't think that I would. I loved the Piccolo one, like, mm. like, like, because it to me, like in my mind, there's too much discordance with what's come before. But hey, it's a classic thing in Dragon Ball. Right. Like, it's a joke where like sort of things get retconned, canon gets rearranged or whatever. So I don't know. What do you, What do you think? Am I? Am I? Let us know. You. I'm sure you will in the comments. Uh, just, but just speaking of the Piccolo situation again, let's just keep rolling with that because I I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. So the, so basically in this episode. Um, we're going to get back to that a little bit here. So Gloria comes down. They're all hanging out uh, at, at uh, what's the, God, the lookout, Kami's lookout. Yeah, which, all... which they call the temple and the palace. Yeah. I, it's, it's a weird translation and on Crunchyroll, but the first time they mention it, they call it the temple. Yeah. And then they go to the lookout and it's like, the temple? Yes. We always call it the lookout. And then the second time they called it the yeah. palace. You know, hey, you know, it's it's like that's like well, Daima also just speaking of on, on a related note means yes. a few things. Yeah, it means it means evil. It means great. It means uh, what was the last thing? Uh, like 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 demon magic, demon magic, so or they, something. Yeah, so, so so evil, great demon magic. So that's this, what Daima could mean. It, for those who don't speak Japanese, this is a problem that native speaking Japanese people have with kanji. Is that there are multiple ways to read it all the time and th this makes it a nightmare sometimes when you see a person's name just in kanji yeah. cuz like you like famous example uh the swordsman Miyamoto Musashi another way to read Musashi is Takezo which is what he was called as a kid so or something like that you know so yeah there are different yeah. things but well, da so daima has different meanings so. yeah but, but just like they they're there in english you know like there's there's yeah. different meanings different different spelling stuff like that as well um what I, what I was about to hit on here was that uh, we see this character. They decide, hey, we got it. They found found it. Uh, they conveniently found this ship of of Supreme Kai's, and they said, hey, let's get it. They teleport it back, and they got to work on it because that's going to help them get to the demon realm, right? Because only ships from the demon realm can mm -hmm. traverse back and forth to the demon realm. And obviously, mm -hmm. Bulma's a genius. She will find out the technology to let them do that. I'm sure. But before they they get to work, she says it's going to take ten days to fix. But then this interesting stranger appears out of nowhere, right? Yeah, and you 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 had a pretty um, poignant uh, yeah. reference for him or yeah. comparison, which which as I saw him more, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. He, this I is feel totally, like that, yeah. okay. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> so this this character Gloria, which is the namesake of the episode, Gloria, is a character from the Demon Realm who we saw in the first episode, who is trying to covertly get 
covertly get uh, Goku's help. And he comes down, he gets out of his little space pod. At first, I thought he was reminiscent of the outfits and the designs of the Galactic Patrol arc and Dragon Ball Super, which he does a little bit, but as soon as he walked out, you see his boots, you see his gun strap on his hip, you see his jacket, and you're like, I'll be damned. That is Han freaking Solo if, you ever, if you've ever seen him. It does seem like Han Solo was the reference, which yeah. is, as you pointed out, we've talked about it before on the pod. Yep. One of the first things that got Toriyama noticed was a one-shot parody of Star Wars yeah. that he did. So it, he was a big Star Wars fan. That's kind of how he got his start in a way. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, he's finally going back to Star Wars. And it's funny because in Star Wars A New Hope, what, Luke, Luke and Obi-Wan, they need a ship. And guess what? You know, Gloria comes down and he is a Han Solo-esque character. We don't know if his intentions either because Supreme Kai is like, hey, watch out for him. He could be, we don't know exactly what he's, what he's thinking. He looks a little roguish like Han Solo. And he just so happens to ship that can take them to the demon realm. Right. So, you know what? We're going to give props to Star Wars, props to Kira Toriyama to throw in a little lo- Star Wars love back in there. And, you know, Gloria is Han Solo for this show. And speaking of rogues, I think one of my favorite things about this episode in terms of the people being aged backwards was uh, Child Mr. Satan and Child Master Roshi. Oh, and Ox King, too, right? Oh, and, and Mr. Popo. <laughs> yes. Mr. Popo with the crazy horns on his head. Yes. Yeah. That's a, okay, let's get back to Satan and um, Ox King. But we got to talk about Popo, guys. This yeah. Is, this is a huge... Huge reveal for us, at least for Dragon Ball fans, lifelong Dragon Ball fans. We have a head and horn reveal <laughs> for Popo. We, I, I don't think I can ever honestly say I've ever seen Mr. Popo without his turban on, right? Yeah. No, I don't think ever, so. Ever. And he does, and he has horns. Now, he has pointy ears like Demon Realm ears, but he has the pointy ears like King Yama and those of the other realm. Yeah. Which is very reminiscent of like, you know... Um, Snake Way, we see Goku fall off, and he meets, you know, those two crazy characters. Can't remember their name right now. And he kind of looks more like the traditional Buddhist image of Yama, yeah. too. So that's an interesting comparison. I didn't think about that. But, but yeah, and he also, it's funny because we, we've we talked about on before on the pod how he, he, he has kind of a weird way of talking yeah. in the Japanese version where he kind of speaks in incomplete sentences, but his like diction and grammar are perfect as a child. Yeah, he's like, no, he's, oh yes, Dende was kidnapped and taken to the demon realm. <laughs> yeah, he, like, he has definitely been working on his uh, his grammar and grammatical skills, so right. good job, Mr. Popo. You're spending a lot of time up there. You've got to be doing something right. But, he, he gets dumb with age, like but as a child, he's a genius. But if anyone's watching who might know this that we don't... I'm I mean, you know, we consider ourselves pretty well versed in Dragon Ball, but did they ever explain where Mr. Popo came originally from? Because it does make sense to me that he might be otherworldly character because, you know, he works with Kami one on one and right. Kami's good friends with Yama as well. So maybe eventually we'll get a Popo backstory and maybe he's from the other world. I my my idea was that he was always part of the lookout. Like that right. that, that was the sense that I got that like every Kami that comes through there, um, Popo is just always there. He's like this genie. Um, sort of like demon figure, like like not demon in like the Western sense, okay. but like like an otherworldly being who is in charge of like sort of maintaining the heavenly realm of Earth. Or oh, something. really, Dan? Really, we're gonna go there? Just like a, a plantation, or that's not what I said. Is he the is he the is he the help, Dan? Well, 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 look, well, look, if we want to get into that, no, 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 we'll here. No gloves off. We're going there. When he first, when we first see him, he is watering flowers. He is planting a garden. When Goku first climbs in Yoibo from Karin's palace all the way up to the tower, he's, you know, tending a garden. I know. And that's, it's basically just follows Kami around. Just like, oh yes, Kami, yeah, I'll do, I'll do whatever you say. So, so, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just teasing you guys, but yeah, it's, 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 funny because, you know, uh, Mr. Popo has a long and storied history with, uh, you know, some racial discrimination, which we actually tackle in an episode of Dragon Ball in our pre- previous pods. Hey, hey. Check it out. And we, we actually go into detail and explain the Japanese version. We're not going to do this now, today, on this pod. No, we've, or, about. we've already covered it, and it's it's a it's a heated debate. Like, it's been for we, the, like, in the Dragon Ball world forever. Like, like, like that, that image in the Western world means something different than it does in the Japanese yeah. world. And that, we'll, now, leave that's, that. That, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. So we, we are just teasing, but yeah, we love Mr. Popo, and we are excited to learn more backstory about this horns, and if he is from the other world yeah the other major thing that i loved in this episode yeah. and like i'm just gonna always come back to this because this is like my my thing is that like the character designs look 
fantastic. So good. The animation, so good. like, I mean, there wasn't any, like, battle stuff. You know, this was a budget save episode right. or whatever. But, like, when Goku brought the Nyoibo up to the lookout and started swinging it around, I was just like, God, that looked beautiful. Yeah. It, it, looked, was... it looked so good. Like, like I cannot wait for these Nyoibo, Nyoibo, like, now I have, like, a New Jersey accent. Right. Can't wait for this Nyoibo, like, fight scenes later when he goes to the Demon Realm, which it feels like, based on the, the very short preview that we got at the end, that we're gonna be there next episode. You know, you know. Speaking of the Noyobo and, and Dragon Ball, you know, and going back to the history of Dragon Ball, and and this was kind of made as a 40th anniversary kind of spectacular, just yes. to you know to go over the all of Dragon Ball. So when we talk about the Noyobo, which is it was a really cool scene. So Goku does a side quest in this episode mm-hmm. to get his Noyobo because his body being small, he still is you know all the powers essentially. We think we don't know yet, which we're going to talk about in a second here is. Maybe he has all the powers and abilities yet. He just doesn't know how to use his body. So he kind of like when Ginyu took his body and didn't it, know what to do with his body. Yeah, <clears throat> actually, that's a direct one to one great comparison there, DK, because he, he had to learn how to use the body and he's trying to use it now. But instead, he says, "You know what? Let's get some help. Let's get that power pole to extend so I can reach a little, a little further and, right. and do my tax better." And it was just cool to see. You know, Goku has a really great moment with Bulma, and he, sh- he brings up to Bulma and is like, "Oh, my Noyobo." And so, if you're like us and you've seen Dragon Ball back in the day, you're like, "Oh man!" It just brings back all the memories of them growing on adventures to. Together and uh, just you know Bulma and Goku again. It yeah, was kinda, yeah, it was kind of great. And it was just that was just one little second, but it's like oh man, and it brought like brought back the feels. It was it was a, it, yeah like like this episode was fine. This episode was yeah. fine. It, it was it was again it was set up. It was exposition or whatever. If I had any critique, I would say like I, I would I could do for some more like like little twists or whatever like like they they kind of like you know at the end of the saiyan saga there's all this hope like wait we can get to namek because we still have nappa's ship here and they're in the hospital and bulma's like look i've got the remote control and then she blows it up so yeah. it's, it's like a big like butt you know like i talk about butts and therefores a lot like and stuff like that but then popo shows up he's like well kami has a ship too or whatever and it's like i felt like there was almost that in this episode but now it's just that there's two ships it's like okay we're waiting 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 we're talking we're doing exposition dumps but then some other guy shows up and he's like well i also have a ship so we can just leave right now and everybody else can just come later or Han something. solo gloria but, yeah but this is interesting so now so now we see we're getting some setup for the future here all right so we know goku is leaving with glorio and uh supreme kai and we see that in the trailer you see a lot of action with those three characters kind of adventuring in the demon realm at first yeah now if we get one more ship it looks a little bit bigger than Glorio, so maybe he can hold more characters. Do you think? I mean, Piccolo has obviously got to go to the Demon Realm, right? He's got to. I mean, that's. I mean, like I said earlier, that, that's that's what I would want. I would. Yeah. Wa- I would want his story in Daima to be a discovery of his past. Yeah, I mean, even even from a, a, a writing perspective, that's probably the safest route to go because yeah, it'll, it, you know, obviously he, we already know. Piccolo has a encyclopedic memory and and he can magically remember stuff he didn't know about. We get that, you right? Know, it's, <laughs> we we look past that kind of plot holes. It's it's whatever, but it will be a great moment to to for Piccolo to see even more in his past. We saw Namek and and the Frieza saga and got to spend a, 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 pr- literally the whole saga there. Mm-hmm. And now it'll be interesting to see where the history goes even before Namek. You right, know, the demon realm and the origins of the demon world. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you were talking a second ago about what powers Goku doesn't doesn't have as yes. a kid. Yeah. Apparently, he doesn't have instant transmission anymore. Yes, because Kibito was sort of like their Uber Eats driver. He was like, like here, use your teleportation, like. Yeah. Get food, get this, get that, teleport us back and forth. Yeah, and he Bulma, w- ugh, she was savage. She's ordering his ass around. Yeah, but but, <laughs> but but Goku, like, because he couldn't fly because he's not used to using his power in his body, had to use um, Nimbus or Kintoon, well, but if you will, yeah. He, did, he didn't use Kin- Nimbus. Oh, he didn't? No, yeah. oh, you're Remember? right, you're right. I was, yeah. like, I was like, he should because we already got the throwback with yeah. the power pole slash Noyobo. And I was like, dude, is like, you know how great it would be if he just said, you know, Come here, Nimbus, and just called his Nimbus and just flew away on that. Right, super cool. I right. would I would have loved if there had been a thing where like um, as the as they age down, they just do not have access to the same well of power. Right. They they like he doesn't know Buku Jitsu anymore, so he can't fly, can't go Super Saiyan. So like he fully has to be like, oh man, I all the things that I've been used to for like the last twenty years, I no longer have at my disposal. Now I have to like learn how to like 
use this body and like do everything and like I have to use Nimbus, I have to use the Nyoibo all over again because it's kind of like in the middle right now. It's right. kind of split. It's like he kind of can do some stuff mm -hmm. and he kind of can't do other stuff. And I feel like it would be a great disadvantage to have a first grader in the demon realm who doesn't know how to use his own power. Right. It would almost be like a Gohan arc. It's like yeah. he has to discover how to like bring his power out because yeah. he just doesn't know, you know? I mean, I, it would have been great, but I, I don't mean, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. You know, we haven't seen that yet, though, D. Yeah, may maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Right now, it's, it seems like in the middle, like, it doesn't know what it wants to be. It doesn't know, like, does he have his powers? Does he not? In the intro, beautifully animated intro we finally got to see in this episode. But he is Super Saiyan. He does go Super Saiyan, yeah. So so maybe it's a slow progression as they go to the demon realm and, and the plot starts to thicken. Maybe, you know, he starts unlocking some of his uh, abilities that he's had before. I mean, th yeah. they're not going to make a Dragon Ball Dima show or a brand new Dragon Ball show where no one goes Super Saiyan, right? Like, right. that's just a, that's a staple, you know? So, qu question for you. Yeah. If you were in the Dragon Ball Z world, if you were one of these people, and you had, you know, you were de-aged as a kid, wouldn't this give you sort of carte blanche to just try to go into the room of spirit and time as much as possible, and then just age to an adult again, but, like, have 30 years of training under your belt? God, you know, I, didn't, I never even thought about that until right now. <laughs> so it's like, and, and it's like one day is one year. And it's like, dude, I got, I, well, spend, I, spend two weeks. And then you're like, you're a teenager. You're still yeah. in the prime of your life, but you know, you, you've had 14 years of training. Right. Oh wait, but there's it, no, there's, there's a limit. There's a, I forgot. You can only go in three times total in your whole life. Yeah. You can't go to, yeah. I'm, no, that's a good, thank yeah, God. We're never about, mind. We're about to get destroyed by, by yeah. everyone on YouTube here. Somebody's like typing super fast <laughs> already. <laughs> and this is like, it's yeah, like, no, 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 we no. forgot. Sorry about that. But I'll tell you why it, that, that doesn't matter anyway. I think it's a great concept, but remember, uh, Saiyans don't age like normal humans do anyway. Right. So, so they're going to look, they're going to look like they're 30 years old, probably for the next 50 years. Right. Well, I mean, like now that everybody is the same age, I feel like if I were sort of a third tier character, someone who's kind of pushed off to the yeah. side, like a Tenshin Han or Chaozu or Yamcha or even a Mr. Satan, I'd be like, this is my chance. Yeah. Like, like. Let me get inside the gravity chamber, you know, that yeah. that Bulma invented, and let me like train up to be as strong as these people. I'd say let's go, let's go for it. Let's see. Like I, I do really hope that they do spend a lot of time back on Earth with the characters who don't go, because like if Krillin's left out, that's gonna if Grillin, you know, uh, our guy <laughs> Grillin, if Grillin's left out. <laughs> Then I'll be a little frustrated because I love Krillin. He's one of my favorite characters. And like, what's Master Roshi Master about to do? He's like, he's a first grader and he's about to go on a tear. He's like, <laughs> he's like in a pimp I suit like, Bro, I like, you... and stuff. Yeah, he's, he's just he's about to just go off. And it's like, oh man, I don't, what's this gonna be? Like it, this it, little kid just <laughs> macking on all these like women and stuff. He's gonna go, he's gonna go to like the to to kindergarten or to first grade and hit on his teacher. I, oh yeah. That was, <laughs> he pretend to be a kid again. <laughs> I, I was I was worried. It's like he's not gonna like hit on kids who like no, look his age, no. right? He's like hopefully hit on his yeah. teacher. I I hope that that would be him, but it's Master Roshi, so with him you guys know anything, You never know. You never know. Yeah. But I, it would be funny to see if uh Kami recruits like Krillin to come like help him like work on his game or something like that. Like I don't know. I I, I doubt he's gonna be involved in the fighting. Maybe he's babysitting, like Krillin babysitting uh you know Trunks and Goten a lot would be a, a, something funny like that. And it, it was just cool to actually see like a young Ox King and his little, you know, chibi Ox King and Mr. Satan. You know, I've never mm -hmm. been a Mr. Satan fan or character, but he had a couple good lines in here as well. And it's just fun to see some difference and variation than what we have in the past. Right. So here's here's a fun thing that I thought of too, because because I my mind always goes to like the side and all these little tangents when I'm watching these things about the, the larger world. Right. And I was thinking about that moment in Super when Goku goes and he meets Android 17 and they're sitting around the campfire and they're just talking about what their lives have been like and how he's married and he has kids and stuff like that. And it would have been funny if he had been like, oh yeah, and also like five years ago randomly I like turned into a kid for two weeks. Yeah. And, but but then I remembered like that wouldn't happen because Android 17 did not save the world. Right. So he hasn't been de-aged. Exactly. So somewhere out there he's like meeting the love of his life. He's mm -hmm. like becoming a, a ranger, you know, protecting animals or whatever. Whereas like his sister, unbeknownst mm -hmm. to him, is now like a child. Right. Yeah. I and mean, good point there too because it was funny in this episode. They know, noticed the staff, the catering staff that was hired for the for Trunks' birthday party was uh, they were they they were all you know middle aged people or you know in their twenties thirties you could tell they weren't de aged they weren't babyized right so I wonder if there's any uh, like the Android seventeen or I wonder if there's any other uh, people that are like main or side 
characters who didn't get de-aged because we didn't see we, there's a lot of characters we haven't seen yet in this in this series that haven't been de-aged or we don't know if they have or not because how how involved did they have to be with the fight against with Boo? You know? That was my next question. How, how broadly does that wish apply? Yeah. Because Chaozu didn't help with Boo. Yeah, like I mean, Chaozu didn't even help with with the Saiyans. Yeah, like really, exactly. yeah, I mean, well, he didn't do anything. He blew up and nothing happened. He got he, Tien mad, but that didn't really help either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, why why is he de-aged? You know, like I, I don't <laughs> so, know. Yeah, Chelsea always looks like he's uh, in first grade. You know. Oh, True, yeah. Five-year-old. So he's, I, he's just perpetually a first grader, yeah. So I, I guess if you're just a cool character in the plot, they're going to be age it just for fun. And, but hey, I will say wrapping up yeah. that episode three, I'm excited to get to the demon realm yeah. to see what the actual plot is going to be. Like, like I, I'm, give, I'm giving this some grace because it looks gorgeous. It's like, okay, there's there's some setup, but Dragon Ball Z has always had exposition and setup, whatever. Like, let's just get to the demon realm in episode three. Let's see what's going to happen. And, and I, I really don't know because there's also this other thing that we didn't talk about. Well, I'll say it right for the end that Goma is the king of like the third demon world or something oh, like yes, that. Oh, yes, exactly. And, and um, Glorio are, are is, we, a, is a servant of like another king yeah. of another part of the demon world. Or is we ne- are now going to call him? Han Glorio. Yeah, Han Glorio. Uh, Han Solo, Han Glorio. Yeah, Han yeah. Glorio, yeah. So <laughs> that's one thing, good good point we didn't mention. It's like, what is that? I, I thought at first, I asked Dan, I was like, are they talking about Goma being the demon king? But I don't think he works for him. Goma, uh, Han Glorio works for someone else, right? Yes. Uh, the real demon king, you think? or Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. I, mean, I mean, yeah, it, it flew by so quick and... We when we do these pods, we want these to be like an organic reaction. Like if we 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 don't want to be like encyclopedias about right. the episode. It's like we want to just be like, wait, is you know, is that what happened or whatever? Yeah. That's what it seems like it is. It seems like Goma is a king of a part of the demon world, and Gloria works for someone, someone else. Someone else. Okay, that, yeah. that does make sense. But that's what's so exciting, right? This whole show question marks we don't know what's going to happen we haven't seen the demon realm besides trailers and it's it's exciting to see where it goes fr- from here I, my prediction you know kaioshin is obviously wary of glorio i'm a bit too right. I, I wonder if glorio is using goku to try to get the demon realm dragon balls for his boss mm. or whatever and that he, there's going to be a betrayal at some well, point we, we did hear earlier in this episode uh goma was talking about, to neva about uh he has to fight the tamagami to get to get access to the Dragon Balls, right? So obviously we know Goku and, and crew is gonna have to fight the Tamagami. To uh, hopefully I said that right. It might be something a little different, but Tamagami it's pronounced Tamagotchi, Kevin. Ta- I know. I, <laughs> we all had a Tamagotchi back in back in my day. No, but uh, th- if they fight the Tamagami and then they can get the Dragon Ball, so we know we've got some great action coming in the future. Right, and it would be cool. I mean, like like Namek was great because people were stranded on an alien world. It would be cool if there was a betrayal early enough. Where now Goku is stranded in the demon realm. Yeah. He's not just there, he's stranded there and he has to fight his way literally out. Yeah. Because we there's no plot to really foil because Goma didn't get his other wishes. Right. So it's not like there's like an evil thing happening. I you know, it was a it was an all right joke. I kind of wish that he had gotten his other wishes because right. I, I I want some resistance. It's like it's like what are they fighting against or whatever. But it might be a story about being stranded. It's yeah. also but it's also a rescue story because yeah. Dende is there. Exactly. So, so it's an it's just an adventure. It's a great adventure, like the new intro song. What do you think about the new intro for the show? Now we saw the full. I don't think the first one had that. You know. No. Yeah, they played the song at the very end, but they didn't play the whole thing. Yeah, it's a it's a fun it's song. Fun. Yeah, it's the, chill. the animation yeah. was great. Yeah, like it's 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 mm-hmm. fine. It's, it's fine. It's catchy. It was fine. It was fun. I think it's called John John or something. Yeah. Just like the episode, episode two, Glorio. Uh, overall impressions, I give it a B. It was fun. It w- it wasn't as action packed and exciting as episode one, but we're excited to see where it goes from here. I'll give it a C plus. I have one more thought. Yeah. I've, I've been saving this. I for, I I'm forgot ge- about I'm this. Generous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just super generous. <laughs> I, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, C yeah. plus, C is, plus fine. is fine. C it's fine. Is fine. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it passed. It passed. So in, in, the, in the last episode, both Kevin and I were gushing about the new animation staff and yeah. how everything looked, especially the flashback sequences, how they matched the styles of exactly. both the end of Dragon Ball era and the Boo era. Mm-hmm. And there is a reason for that. And you brought up Dragon Ball Super Super Hero, right. which, was, which was the key to unlocking this. So the guy responsible for that section mm-hmm. in Dragon Ball Super Super 
superhero. His name is Chigashi Kobuto. Yes. And he okay. he is an animator who is like he's like us if we could animate. He's just a super Dragon Ball nerd. His life dream up. is to remake the whole show in the style of the manga. Goosebumps, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Like, he loves it. He was responsible for that scene. He advocated like we need a 2D section in the CG movie. Let's do it. And he was the guy responsible for that beautiful opening animation of Goku. And we'll put that back on here again. Yeah, when he's punching and then like when it goes to the Dragon Ball thing and then yeah. when it switches and stuff like that, that's all thanks to this guy. Like this guy's holding it down at Toei. Thank you so much. Yeah, for and, all of us Dragon Ball nerds. It, well, I think, well, they actually, you know, just the, no, we're almost done here, wrapping up, but they did, he originally didn't want to do it. He's like, I'm not going to sign on to do any animation for this unless you do a 2D, unless you do a 2D segment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? That was, that oh, was yeah. actually part of his prerequisite to getting it. He's like, look, I'm, I don't know how I feel about computer generated films in general, mm -hmm. especially with anime and, you know, 2D hand-drawn animations. Uh, it's a staple. It's a part of history of, of the animation style, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much, yeah. uh, anime. But he said, he's like, if I do work on this project with you guys, I know you're going to do a lot of uh, computer generated stuff and 3D stuff, but he's like, we need to have at least a nice segment that is hand-drawn. And that was part of the handshake deal to get him to work on this project. And not only hand-drawn, yeah. because every time older Dragon Ball Z things have been reanimated in 30 years, I think they always look like crap. Like like the intro to Dragon Ball Kai that was done in that like modern style. It's like, this doesn't look as good as the old school stuff, right. but this guy likes the old school look. Yeah. Not even that, he, he, he likes the old school look and he likes the manga design. So thank yeah. you, uh, oh, yeah. Chikashi Kobuto, like for thank holding so it down much. for yeah, everybody. We, I mean, like giving us this beautiful animation. I look forward to seeing more of it as we go. Renew, you gave us renewed hope for more beautiful animation like that as well, which we are already getting in Dragon Ball Daima. Um, right. right before we wrap it up, we just want to say thank you guys for all tuning in this last week. Yep. We have a huge turnout. We've got a thousand new subscribers in one week. We've got over 4,000 views yeah, on thank, episode hey, one. Hey, welcome new subscribers. Thank you thank so you. much. If you're not subscribed, please key blast that subscribe button ding, right ding, now. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Smash that like button. We're going to be re we're gonna be reacting day of every single episode, all 20 episodes of Dragon Ball exactly. Daima. So just stay tuned. We've got other content coming soon. We've got Dragon Ball Sparking Zero yep. video coming out. So so stay tuned. watching as well. So check us out. Stay tuned. And we'll see you next time on Dragon Ball Dimapod. All right. All right. Sweet. Sweet.